With this extended body version of the Beefcake Stone, start off with a few wraps of thread on a straight shank streamer hook that I've cut the eye off of. Then I'm going to bring in about an eighth of an inch wide strip of two millimeter tying foam. We're going to get about two or three wraps on that. Once we have that secured on the hook shank, I'm going to take it and we're going to twist it or wrap it back. I'm looking for four wraps on this one back toward the bend of the hook. So once I have that wrapped over there, I'm going to take the thread and I'm going to work that thread back over it. Secure that foam right in its place there. This front tag is going to stay. This rear tag will clip off. At that point, I'm going to bring in a strand of copper brown sexy floss. And all we're looking for here is a couple tail fibers. So we're going to tie it in on the near side, a couple wraps, pull it toward the rear of the hook shank, and secure it with a couple more wraps. Snip it off. Not too worried about the specific length right now. I can tweak that a little bit later on in the tying process. So before I bring in the actual foam that will form the top and the bottom of the body, I'm going to hit this with just a little bit of zap gap just to help bind those pieces in. Bring in the first piece of foam. and I'm going to butt this up so that this piece hits about or goes just past the end of the wraps that I laid down. I'm going to catch that with the, with the thread, excuse me, cinch and pinch. Get three or four wraps over it, rotate it upside down, and repeat the exact same process. Catch that right there. Cinch and pinch. Three or four good wraps. And then I'm going to begin that process of simply returning the thread to the shank and starting to create my additional segments. So once I have it there, I give it a good cinch and pinch. Get my three or four wraps, rotate it upside down, and I'm just going to repeat that same process, working it forward until I have at least four nice body segments. At that point, I'm going to throw a couple whip finishes over the body, snip the thread, and I'll touch my cutoff point there with a little bit of zap again. Take that. Slide it off the extended body hook, and at that time, I'm just going to take a quick look at my tail fibers. I'm going to snip them so they're about a half inch out of the extended body, and then I'm just going to take the edge of the scissors and I'm going to snip off these corners here, try to give it a little bit more natural appearance. So, take the extended pin out of the vise, I'm going to bring in a size six. Jamco 2499. This is a larger version. This is a, a salmon fly version that we're tying, so it is pretty chunky, pretty big. I'm going to take the point of that 2499 hook and I'm going to slide it right through the middle or about through the middle of that foam, just in front of the last segment that I created. And then I'm going to secure that in the vise. So slide that down. And off the hook, attach our thread. And I'm going to cover that shank with thread. I'm going to go back to the bend of the hook, return it to just behind the eye of the hook, and coat that with zappa gap. Once I get to this point, I'm going to slide this up to where I can see that body's starting on the hook shank. I'm going to pull that 
scrap piece of foam forward, catch it with the thread, and I'm just going to work it back over the front of it. If that tag piece is in the way, take your scissors, snip it out of the way. A little less hassle for you as you work that back. Really squish that down, get that nice and secured. And then with the nose of the bobbin right there, you can rotate that upside down. And we're going to form another segment on the bottom. So catch it, cinch and pinch, give it your three or four wraps in that spot. Rotate it right side up, and then I'm going to put a little bit of zap gap on there. Just to hold that together. Same deal. Get it over the top there, cinch and pinch. And then on the top of this segment here, we're going to tie in the wing material. And for that, I have a piece of thin skin. This is natural bastard modeled. And so we're going to peel that off the backing. When I put this on there, I want it to extend uh, close to the length of those tail fibers. Back off of the abdomen there. So hold that in place. Catch it with three or four wraps. Should look something like that. On each side of that, uh, I'm going to secure or tie in. On each side of that, I'm going to tie in a pair of legs. This is just medium round rubber. This is brown. I've got this knotted here, so I'm going to catch it. Two or three wraps, take a look at it, see if it's where I want it. Come in with another piece on the opposite side of the hook here. And repeat that same process. Taking a look at where I'm at here. At this point I'm going to take a spare piece of wire, I just have a spare piece of UTC wire. And I'm going to pull these rubber legs back and I'm going to wrap that wire over the top of them. The bonus of that is it just keeps those legs out of the way during the rest of the tying process. So that I don't have to mess with that. So once I get that there, I'm going to return that thread back to the hook shank. And I'm going to move it up to where it's about a quarter of an inch behind the eye of the hook. At that point, once again, I'll come in. I'm going to catch this little pinch and cinch. Make sure it's nice and snug and where I want it to be. I'm going to look at that head and the salmon fly has a smaller, tinier head. So I'm going to cut a little bit of a taper. And snip that off just in front of the eye of the hook. Before I bring that top piece down, I'm going to put a little zap gap there on the inside of it just to hold it in place. Give it a little added extra durability. And then I'll bring that top piece of foam down. Cinch it pinch it, give me my three or four wraps, and then match that profile with the bottom piece. Take those corners off, kind of round it just a little bit, make it a little bit more natural. Before I pull this thin skin forward for the wing case, I'm going to take another piece of the copper brown sexy floss. I'm going to drape it over the thread. And the reason why I'm going to put it in there at that point in time is because that thin skin will very simply hold it out in front of the head in a more natural position. So at this point I can bring it forward. I'm going to hold that thin skin in place. Squish out any lumps or bumps. Get a few wraps over the top of it. Snip off those antennas so they're sticking out there about an inch. At this point on each side of this segment, I'll tie in the front legs. And once again, this is just medium round rubber. It's brown. Uh, I've pre-knotted all this stuff. And opposite set of legs on the opposite side of the bug here. Legs look all right. Match that length up a little bit. The last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come in with just a little piece of indicator foam. A little bit of zap gap right on top of the thin skin. It's about an eighth inch strip of foam. I want that to touch to about the front of the head. Just back maybe a little bit. Hit it with a few wraps. And usually when I fish these, you know, water's higher, it's spraying, things are rocking. I want to be able to have some visibility. So I'm going to leave this a little bit higher than I do on the hopper. 
And so that's going to stick out like a nice orange headlight for me when I'm trying to search that out, whether that's wade fishing or from a boat. A couple hatch pitches there, and then we're going to finish this guy off. Snip that thread. And I'm going to take my scissors here. I'm going to come across the bottom here. I'm going to cut that flat, and that just gives me a little bit more gap to work with. I can unwind my wire now. Nice long wiggly legs. I like them a little buggier and a little longer. So I'm going to come in, and as I've said before in other videos, this is optional. I'm going to use this UV Cure Coat, and the bonus of it is a couple things. Number one, gives you some durability, but I think more importantly, gives you a little bit of a sheen. A little bit of reflectivity, which is seen in the naturals. If you examine large insects, whether they be terrestrials or technically, I guess you could consider this guy aquatic since that's where he came from. Their exoskeletons are going to have a little bit of reflectivity or a sheen to it. Gives you just that little bit more edgy appeal to the fish.